Hi everyone and welcome to my channel, I'm Michelle. Today's video is going to be all about mini Christmas DIYs. So grab your cup of coffee or your favorite beverage and join me. I found these nativity themed buttons from Hobby Lobby and I thought that they were perfect for this cloche. We're going to need craft sticks and the tumbling tower blocks so that way we can create the different levels that we'll be using in, the, in this cloche. Now I'm planning to treat this almost like a stage so our characters are going to be staggered and they will be at different levels within the cloche. So you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second, but here I'm just trying to figure out the staging of those characters. So now I am gluing down the Holy Family to the first craft stick. Now I love the Gorilla Hot Glue. It's the best in my opinion and it really holds really well and that's what I'm using here. I am just gluing the bases of the family as well as their donkey and I'm adding them to this particular stick. And I will continue to add characters to other sticks as I go along. To get the staggering just right, I decided to go on ahead and cut this craft stick so that way this particular wise man would not be covered by Mary or another character. So I pretty much grew up in the theater. Um, I was a ballerina and we always knew that you never ever faced straight on to the audience and you also never turned your back on the audience. So that is why for this cloche, I am angling all the different characters and animals slightly. So that way you can still see them, but they look a little more dimensional than flat. So here I'm showing you that I am adding another craft stick to the base of the Holy Family. And this is going to be our first riser. And then I will add consecutively from there. So this wise man and the shepherd are getting two craft sticks underneath them. Then the next set are going to get a tumbling tower block on its side. And then the camels are going to get a tumbling tower block on its end. Okay, the levels are set, so now we are going to cover up those craft sticks with some of this Excelsior. So to get it to stick just right, I cut up the Excelsior to as small as I could get it, and I am sprinkling it on top of the hot glue as you can see here. The smaller the pieces, the better in this case, because the larger pieces will just overpower the characters and it just won't look right and you'll have to end up taking it off or trimming it or something like that. And I will end up trimming this just to give it a little bit of a haircut, but it's not as bad as it would have been if we had the long strands. So here are our sheep and then I'm going to move on to all the different risers. And now we're going to glue the risers together. I'm just putting glue on the sides and then smashing them as hard as I can together. And we're going to eventually glue every single riser together.
Now for the star and Gabriel. I'm going to glue the star on the very top of the cloche and the Gabriel is going to be glued on the inside top of the cloche. So it looks like he's floating above the nativity. Okay, to start this DIY, we're going to use the terracotta color of this clay. Now, make sure you wear gloves with this, otherwise you will have Oompa Loompa hands. Uh, just trust me. <laughs> These little buttons came from Hobby Lobby also, and they were little cookie cutters, and I knew exactly what I wanted to do with these. So all I'm doing is I'm taking the clay and I'm smashing it down inside the metal version of the cookie cutters, and I'm going to let it dry inside the cookie cutters and then leave them as is. Now that they're all cleaned up, we're gonna let them dry overnight. These are metal tags from the Dollar Tree and to me they scream cookie sheet. So we're going to adhere the little clay pieces that we made earlier as well as the colored versions of the cookie cutters and we're gonna create a little cookie sheet with cookies on it. Now I don't know about you, but when I'm making cookies, flour is literally everywhere. So we're going to use this white paint to create the look of flour splatters just throughout the sheet. It's not going to be all over, just in certain spots and on the cookie cutters as well. This is an almost dry brush. What I'm doing is I'm just softening some of the brush strokes just to make it look a little more like flower. Once the backing is attached, I'm going to add a printable that says Baking Spirits Bright. I think this would look so cute on a bottle of wine or with some homemade cookies as a hostess gift. This video is part of a playlist, which is the Minis Challenge. It's a monthly one that is put on by Corey over at Crafted by Corey. And it is one of my favorite challenges to do because I can always find a use for the things that I make. <laughs> they are small and they fit pretty much anywhere that I need them to. So I hope that you will watch the playlist and also go check out Corey. I will have everything linked in the description box. This DIY is based on the vintage sled that I put out every year for the Christmas and winter holidays. Now I stained it with both the antique wax by Waverly and I got the small areas with that furniture marker and then the runners I painted with this metallic marker and this paint by Folk Art. This is just extra greenery I had in my stash. I think the non-pine versions may have come from the Dollar Tree. I can't remember though because they have been cut away from their original stem. I apologize for the crazy lighting. It was very gloomy this day when I was filming and the clouds kept making all sorts of crazy lighting in my home. These sweet bows were from the Dollar Tree and the mini snowman hat that I will show you in a minute is from Walmart.
Now for the coordinating pail. I just used one of these little metal buckets from the Dollar Tree and I adhered a skewer to four little craft sticks that I got from Walmart to make the sign. The part of the sign that will be written on is this chalkboard vinyl, I think is what it is, and I just wrote on it with a metallic white marker. And it says, snowballs for sale, homemade. Now for the price. I'm going to use this metallic white marker on the pail, but it does not show up very well. So what I end up doing is I layer a black Sharpie with this white marker on top and it shows much better. You'll see it in the final picture. So all I wrote was five cents each and then these little pom-poms are from the Dollar Tree, I think. And they look so cute because they're iridescent and just look like snow to me. To prepare these ice skates, I removed the snowflake embellishment and the twine. As you can see, the snowflake broke a little bit, but that's okay, we'll make it work. To get the blades silver, I figured it would be easier for me at least to use a paint marker. And this is one from the Dollar Tree, it's the silver color, and it was by far way easier for me than using paint. Now for the heel and the sole of the skate, I am using the same furniture marker, it's the walnut color, and I'm just coloring that in. This paper I have had in my stash for eons, and it's neutral enough that I can leave it up all season. So it's not just a Christmas thing, we can leave it up for all of winter too. So as you can see, all I'm doing is I'm just putting it on the boot of the ice skate. Now here I'm making vertical cuts where the boot curves, so that way I can fold this part of the paper up, which will make it easier for cutting. Now that the paper is cut, I'm going to use the same furniture marker to go along those cut edges. And here I'm going to make where the laces are going. I make seven circles, which will eventually be the holes, and I'm going to use my crocodile to get those punched out. This thing is awesome. If you don't have one, ask for it for Christmas or get it yourself because these things are sweet. To differentiate the place where the laces are going and the rest of the boot, I'm just gonna go over the lace area with this white metallic marker. Now it does not do full coverage. It's still somewhat transparent, but it is enough of a difference. To create the laces band at the toe of the shoe, we're going to just loop it around and then glue it to the back of the ornament. For the top of the boot, we're going to use the bottom of the beanie and we're going to just glue that right in place. I'm going to cut excess all around so that way I can fold it and create a cleaner edge. I've repeated everything with the second one and now it's time to put them together and accessorize. 
As you saw in the beginning, the original snowflake did break, but I'm gonna use that to my advantage. And we're using this little snowflake decal from the Dollar Tree. And we're going to layer both of these and glue them on. I decided I didn't need all four of these laces, so I'm gonna glue one onto each boot in place and then cut it off. To make a pretty bow, I'm just going to use the last of this lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree. To start this DIY, I'm just going to stain the top two thirds of this cutting board from Dollar Tree. And we're going to use these decal tiles that I also found at the Dollar Tree, and I think they're really cool. And we're just gonna fit them to size and mess around with them and <laughs> just get them all on there. It does take some folding and some surgery to get it all the way it needs to look, but I think eventually it really does look very nice. These letters are from Target uh, probably about two or three years ago and they have adhesive on the back so we're going to use Mary and I show it catty corner on here but I end up changing it. I like it better um, straight horizontal. So I'm going to use those good old cookie cutter buttons again and I'm going to glue them onto this as well with the twine.
I would love to know which one of these was your favorite. Mine was probably the sled, but I want to know your opinion too. Comment down below. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to spend it with me, and I hope that you have very happy holidays, a Merry Christmas, and until I see you in the next video, take care.